It is seven minutes to seven. We should get rid of the Foreign Office, not just the Department of State, but also the fusty building in Whitehall with its colonial-era portraits. So says a former senior, a set of former senior diplomats and officials. Mirza Malik is among them, former Director General at the Foreign Office, one of the authors of the piece. So, Mr Malik, good morning to you. Good morning, Justin. Thanks what, for having me on the programme. Well, thanks for coming on. What, what would the new department do differently? So I think the core insight from my, my colleagues, Lord Sedwell and Tom Fletcher and the group that we gathered and debated some of this stuff in Oxford, is that the UK's place in the world is changing. Uh, we've exited the European Union. We power is shifting to the east. Geopolitics has become very, very bumpy. The rules-based order is under great pressure. But at the same time, the UK remains a very open economy, a very interconnected economy. And our future prosperity and security depend on strong international relations. So our call is to do foreign affairs slightly differently, to modernize our approach, and indeed to look at what we can learn from countries that, uh, like Japan, Switzerland, Norway, Canada, offshore nations, if you like, countries that are linked to big uh, economies on their borders, but also need to look beyond those big economies to their international relations around the world. So we're calling uh, for uh, the UK to imagine our place in the world, our role in the world in 2040, and to build the structures and institutions that we need for that future, which can be a very but, bright and exciting future. But isn't that what the Foreign Office does? Well, the Foreign Office, uh, the Foreign Office does many of those sorts of things. Uh, but the Foreign Office is also very focused on uh, national interest, this idea that the foreign policy operates in the national interest. But national interest, of course, is a very malleable concept. All parts of government do national interest. So we're calling for clarity of objectives, a very laser-like focus on the things that will determine the UK's future prosperity and security. L like what? Things Give us like an example. Of, yeah, sorry, it's as so, you were about so, to list them and I was about to ask you um, uh, unnecessarily. Well, so things, sorry, so let's list a few like, of them. Yeah, so things like economic secure, uh, uh, economic prosperity, security, climate change, development, building up international institutions. So instead of a malleable idea of pursuing national interest, we're calling for a clarity of objectives, setting down a bunch of things that the Foreign Office and indeed wider government will focus on, and then building capability, skills, data, metrics, and indeed delivery capacity on those, because the things that affect our future are long-term in nature. Uh, and all too often our foreign affairs uh, can be pretty short termist. So we need to take a long term focus and build capability for the long term and build institutions that can build, deliver long term impact. Why do you so need to do it? Why do you need to do it in a different, different building? Well, because our building uh, when, doesn't necessarily have to be a, a, a different building, but we're calling for a modernization of uh, the foreign office premises because you know, if you if you enter the Foreign Office building, it speaks of our past rather than our future. Uh, there are still many colonial era pictures on the walls. I came across an incident recently where a senior Irish diplomat was visiting the Foreign Office for a meeting about the UK's Food and Nutrition Summit. Towering over the meeting table was a portrait of Lord Trevelyan, who was famous for wanting to limit the UK's financial exposure to the Irish potato famine. The significance of that was not lost on the Irish diplomat. So, you know, well, but, but isn't, are... hang on, isn't the significance just that that is our past and, and it's something that we might not be proud of everything that those people in these portraits did, but they are part of, of us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we, we have a lot to be proud of uh, in our past and some things not to be so proud of. But our point is that we need to look forward to 2040 to look at how the world is changing, to think about our role in that world and really to position ourselves for that future. We're still a very large economy, the world's sixth largest economy, some of the best universities. We're a P5 country in the United Nations. We're a major shareholder in the international financial institutions. So we have a very exciting future. And our call is to modernize and to look to that future and to build right. the institutions and structures for that. Mirzam Malik, former Director General uh, for Africa at the Foreign Office. Thank you very much. Simon King now with the weather. Simon.